Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. We all know that inflation has been making our lives much more difficult, at least for the past couple years now. Things that we use every day, especially food, have become a lot more expensive. But there are still several pieces of prepper and survival gear that you can get for under $50. So today we're going to be talking about nine of those, and most of them are available in the $30 to $50 price range. The first piece of prepper and survival gear that you can get for under $50 is the Yuko Candle Lantern. You can get a small one like this for around $20 or $30, depending depending on the color that you get and if it's part of a kit or not, or for around $45, you can get the larger candelier model, which is what I have there. The smaller one just uses one candle and it can fit down inside of like your bug out bag. You could keep one in a vehicle or other kits that you may have. And candle lanterns like this are commonly used in tents during winter months to help reduce the amount of condensation and frost that builds up inside of those tents. And if you're concerned about whether or not that's safe, the handle and the chain do keep any hot surfaces on the lantern itself far away from the body of the tent. This would be an excellent emergency item to keep in your car in case you get trapped in your vehicle during a winter storm. It's not going to keep you toasty warm, but it should help raise the temperature inside of there at least a couple of degrees. Using it's pretty easy. You can light it either by lowering the glass slightly so you can reach the candle's wick with a lighter or a match, or you can unscrew the bottom of the lantern, which will allow you to remove the candle itself. You can light it and then place it back inside the lantern. And doing that is also how you'll replace the candle when needed. After you remove the base from the lantern, rotate the metal candle holder, and then you can remove the old candle and put a new one inside. And then you just reverse those steps to install the candle and its base back into the main part of the lantern. The candelier is the larger model, and it has three candles, which means that it can produce more light and heat. However, if you want to make your candles last longer, then you can choose to just light one or two of them at a time. Since it's larger and can produce more heat, you can also use the candelier to heat small amounts of water or soup. You won't get anything hot enough to boil, but you should be able to get water hot enough to make things like instant coffee or tea. And both of the candle lanterns, they can use three different types of candles. Most lanterns will come with at least one of Yuko's nine hour candles. The small lantern that I picked up was part of a kit that included four candles total. So all together, that should be around 36 hours of light and heat. You can also pick up beeswax candles, which can last for up to 12 hours, along with citronella candles that can last nine hours as well as help repel things like mosquitoes. The main downside to these kind of lanterns is that stockpiling candles for them can get pretty expensive. But there are a couple ways that you can make your own, like you can buy molds for them on places like Etsy, and Jujitsu 2000 did a video a while back showing how you can make your own using PVC as a mold, and I'll be sure to link to that towards the end of this video. Aside from emergency preparedness, candle lanterns like these are also nice if, say, you like natural light while you're camping, but you don't want to haul around something like a hurricane lantern where you could spill oil out of. And they're also one of the safest ways to use a candle since it's enclosed, but of course you still want to exercise good habits and take some safety precautions. You also want to keep in mind that lighting methods like these are not going to be as bright as modern LED lighting methods, so just kind of keep your expectations in check for that. The next prepper and survival item that you can get for under $50 is Survivor Cord Paracord. The paracord that most of us are familiar with consists of seven strands inside of an outer mantle, and it's rated for 550 pounds. Survivor Cord has all that, however, it adds three additional strands. The first is 25 pound monofilament fishing line, which can be used for you guessed it, fishing, but it also works well if you need to make repairs to gear or make tools out in the field. Next, it has wax jute, which can be used as an emergency fire starter. It is very easy to light using a ferro rod, but you will need to separate those fibers beforehand, and that might be a little bit difficult to do if your hands are cold or if you're injured, so that's something to keep in mind there. The survivor cord that I picked up also had a strand of 30 AWG metal wire. This can work well if you need to make snares for small animals like squirrels or do some minor electrical work on things like radios or antennas. My survivor cord came in a length of 100 feet and cost around $40, but you can also get survivor cord XT which replaces the monofilament fishing line and the metal wire with braided fishing line and a Kevlar thread, and that'll cost around $50. However, if that's too expensive, you can still find regular paracord 
for around $10 per 100 feet. But where I see survivor cord as being particularly valuable is if you're trying to make some sort of compact lightweight survival kit where you want each item in there to have multiple uses. As far as actual use is concerned, you can still cut it with a knife the same way you would regular paracord. But if you want to access individual strands, you'll need to remove the outer mantle or sheath. The strands are woven together in such a way that removing one strand at a time can be pretty difficult, especially if you're trying to remove a lot of it at once. The next piece of survival gear that you can get for under $50 is a clean canteen water bottle. The one that I have holds 27 ounces, so it's small enough to fit in my backpack side pocket and cost around $20. You can get clean canteen bottles up to 64 ounces, and those cost around $37. And I picked this one up because my Pathfinder bottle was too big to fit into the side pockets on my backpack. And having a good stainless steel water bottle in things like EDC bags or bug out bags is always a good idea since you can boil water in them. Just be aware that if you get the same one that I have, you'll need something wide and sturdy to set it on since it could tip over because it's so tall and skinny. And you also need to make sure that any bottle that you pick up is single walled and not insulated because you do not want to use those insulated bottles over a fire. Another good piece of survival gear that you can pick up for under $50 is the Escape Light Bivy by Survive Outdoors Logger. Things like this are commonly used as like emergency blankets or as sleeping bag liners when it's very cold. But the reason why I picked this one up in particular is that it is breathable. A lot of survival blankets and emergency bivvies are just made of mylar. And while they do a good job reflecting your body heat back to you, there's absolutely nowhere for moisture to go. So when you've been inside of them for a while and you start to sweat, it's going to get a little bit soupy in there. This particular one is also small and compact, so you can keep it in a backpack. And like the candle lantern that I mentioned earlier, this is another good item to keep in your car in case you get stranded in something like a snowstorm. It may not be cozy, but it may help your body temperature stay high enough to keep you alive. Then also like that it weighs next to nothing, and it's very easy to roll back up and put back in its stuff sack. On my channel, I talk a lot about butane and propane stoves, and the reason why is they're probably the most convenient way to cook during short-term emergencies and power outages. Then they're also good to have if you like to do things like hunting or camping, you can use them for those. However, one big disadvantage that they both have is that they can only run on one fuel source. But there are stoves out there that can run on both. So the next thing we're going to talk about is dual fuel butane and propane stoves. A lot of these cost a little bit over our $50 budget. They're around $55, but I have seen them as low as $35. And I think with all the supply chain issues that we've been having over the past couple of years, it's always a good idea to invest your money in equipment that's as versatile as possible. I know that where I live, there have been times where finding propane's been difficult, then there's been other situations where I couldn't really find butane. So if you have something that can run on both, it'll allow you to continue to stock up even if stores are running a little bit low. And also if you're a new prepper or somebody who just hasn't picked up a camp stove yet, they're a good option since you wouldn't have to buy a stove for each fuel type and it can help save space also. The next prepper and survival item that you can get for under $50 is heirloom seeds. And we are getting to the time of year where we should be planning out our garden and getting the right seeds is a very important part of that. Heirloom seeds will produce plants that you can harvest seeds from, which you can plant again the following year. Most of the seeds and plants that you would find at big box stores or your local hardware store are going to be hybrid plants. And they might grow really well for a season, but you're not going to be able to save the seeds and replant next year. So if you're a prepper who's concerned about a longer term disaster situation, then heirloom seeds are the way to go because they will ensure that you can grow a garden year after year. Fortunately, heirloom seeds are pretty easy to find nowadays. You can pick them up as a kit like this one. Survival Garden Seeds has a few different seed bank kits that you can get like this one is their home garden. It has 30 different varieties and costs $30. Then they have some other larger seed bank kits as well. If you're somebody who wants to select your own varieties, then a website like rareseeds.com is a good option. They're somebody that my family has been using for years and we've been pretty happy with them. Another good thing to pick up for under $50 is different kinds of clothes. Since we're entering spring, a lot of cold weather clothing should be going on sale, so now would be a good time to pick those up. Aside from jackets and boots, also look for other things like hats. This is a beanie I got a while back. It's made of merino wool, so it'll help me stay warm even when it's wet. 
And then for colder temperatures, something like this balaclava would be nice. The last time that I checked, the beanie was around $23 and the balaclava was around $40. But if you want good, inexpensive wool items, then military surplus is something good to look into. But don't overlook other clothing items as well. Just something as simple as some good work clothes that's durable would be very beneficial during a long-term situation. And then if you want to, you can pick up things like BDU pants or cargo pants starting for around $30 or $35. The next prepper-related item that you can get for under $50 is Faraday bags. Like a Faraday cage, these are designed to protect electronics from things like an EMP. Small bags like this one would do a pretty good job protecting things like cell phones and small radios. However, one item that I'm keeping in mind is a Geiger counter. I figure if things get bad enough that we're having to worry about an EMP, then we might also want to have the ability to measure radiation as well. Small bags like these cost around $25, but you can get bigger, more expensive ones to protect things like laptops or even generators. I also like to use a Faraday bag to store my car keys in at night. Thieves are becoming sophisticated enough that they can actually hijack the signal from your key fob to be able to steal your car. But if you put your key fob in one of these bags, then it's going to block that signal so that they can't use it for passive entry or for your car's ignition. Another prepper survival item that you can get for under $50 is LED lighting, and you have a lot of options here. There are a ton of pretty good quality flashlights, headlamps, and lanterns that are available in the $30 to $50 price range. A lot of these aren't going to be from high-end manufacturers, but they should be bright enough and reliable enough for most people's needs. Like I've had this Maglite XL50 for several years. It was my EDC light for a while. Then I have this headlamp that I keep in my EDC bag. It isn't the most fancy light out there, but it does a pretty good job flooding an area in front of me with light and it runs on common AAA batteries. When it comes to LED lanterns you could get one that's really nice like this Streamlight Siege or you could get a multi-pack of cheaper ones. Getting one nice lantern would be a good option if you live by yourself or in a small apartment, but getting a multi-pack might be a better option if you have a larger house or you have a larger family. Being able to have a lantern in each room of the house or have a lantern that each member of your family could take with them would be nice. Also, if you have younger kids, it might tend to break something. Giving them a cheaper lantern would probably be a good idea since if they break it, you're not going to be out that much money. Now, a while back, I did a video showing several different off-grid lighting methods, and you can find that by clicking here. Also, if you want to see last year's version of this video, the items under $50, well, then it was under $60, click here. And also, if you want to see that video by Jiu Jitsu 2000 that I mentioned earlier, check that out down here. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.